Hey everybody, um, it's me, Chloe Thistlin Verse. I'm being joined today by Angela of Literature Science Alliance, and we are going to be working on our slow read of slash read along of the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. Um, we're gonna like wait a couple minutes to see who shows up before we start the sprints, and so we'll just be kind of talking and saying hi to people as people show up. Yeah. Um, yeah. How you finish, right? I, yes, I, I, I couldn't <laughs> stop. <laughs> so I did finish. But where were we supposed to stop? Which chapter? Um, I'm pretty sure it's just chapter 22 chapter that breaks me. Yeah. I think we're so. up to chapter 20. Yeah. I finished yesterday, too. Um, yeah, I saw you in the chat. You, you didn't realize where things ended. <laughs> yeah, I thought that everything that happened at the end had happened at the two thirds mark. So I got to like the two thirds mark and I was so confused. I was like, wait, what? There's more? <laughs> It's yeah. so weird. I forgot some. I forgot how the ordering worked for some things. I think this is the one where I remember where it ends. It's Obelisk Gate into Stone Sky that, like, I really, I, I have a guess and I think I know what's like the ending point, but like it all blurs together for me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so we have like one person in the chat. Hello. Um, we're just waiting until like seven oh five, and then we're gonna start the sprints. Um, do we want to do like? 20, 25 minute sprints. Let me see how long it thinks this short story is going to take me to read. Yeah, that's fine. It thinks it's 40 minutes. 40 minutes is so long for a short story. I read slow though. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really hoping I like this one too. Although I can already tell it's written in dialect, so I'm going to have to like train my brain. I'm always so bad at that. Ugh. So, what are you reading? Are you continuing with Obelisk Gate, or are you like me and reading something else? I'm going to read something else. I'm going to take a break from Broken Earth for a little bit. Um, yeah, love the heart heal. I'm still working on Bacchanal by Veronica Henry, so I'm going to be trying to get through that. What's that one like? Um, It's like a horror. It's, I'd say it's definitely adult, even though it has a teen protagonist um, about this traveling carnival in the um, southern United States during the Great Depression. Um, It's like the slow, like, Creeping sense of evil is basically how it would. Oh, nice. No, I need you to get out of your reviewing slump because you're how I find all my new favorite authors is pretty much what I've discovered. Thanks. <laughs> so. I, will, I will try. Hey, Alexandra, thanks for joining. Yeah, for people who are talking backstage about how I'm in a reviewing slump and I like don't know why. Because I was looking back at the ones I reviewed this year, and it's really only been seven standalones. So I don't know why I'm tired, but... I think I only review, like, two or three things a month. Like, outside of doing, like, wrap-ups and things. Like, standalone, yeah. dedicated reviews. Yeah, like, I thought, like, I could do two a month for, like, a year. Well, minus, like, a hiatus month. So, like, I guess, what, 22 in a year? And I'm, like... No. <laughs> reviews are so intimidating. Like once I film them, I feel good, but like collecting the thoughts, it's just wow. Oh, yeah. I've been doing lives and I'm just like head empty. Like this is what I thought of it. Brain dump. <laughs> Sorry. AT, thanks for joining. Um, so I think we'll start. Um, I'm just gonna pull up the timer real quick. Just watched a video about the hustle, and now that song's stuck in my head. So. What's the hustle? The disco song goes like, do, 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 do. it's like from 75. It's very catchy. It's, I've never heard of this. <laughs> well, it's a very famous song. I Maybe I'll listen it. to that during the. <laughs> um, it, the hustle is a, one of the most famous disco songs. Um, I just know it because I've, I've run into it in ballroom, I guess. Got it. Well, and my dad listens to a lot of disco around the house, so that probably is it too. Makes sense. Okay, well, I'll talk to you all in 25 minutes. Happy sprinting.
Okay. So that was 25 minutes. How is people's reading going? I'm halfway through the story. I understand it. It's good. <laughs> I guess for those who don't know, I'm reading um, the short story anthology, New Sons, and I'm on, what's the story called even? I'm so bad at remembering like names of things. It's called Blood and Bells. So, so I'm liking it. Nice. Um, people want to share in the comments how they're reading. We can, or how the reading's going. We can talk about that too. Um, I made some more questions based on um, what's going on in the story. Did you yeah. look up what the hustle is? Because I feel like that was more important. Oh, crud, I didn't. I forgot about that. I forgot my search bar now, so I can go join the next friend. <laughs> I'm just glad that I wasn't just making it up that that's a famous song that T also agrees with me. By Van McCoy? Yes. In the Soul City Symphony? Okay. He has like 700 songs copywritten. He died so young, though. It's really sad. I learned a lot about the hustle like 15 minutes before coming on here. Oh, wow. Ari <laughs> says they're cooking. Nice. Okay. What are you cooking? I want to know. It's been so long since I cooked, since I'm with my family, and I don't like it, so I just shunt it off to someone else. Yeah, I'm lucky. Um, my boyfriend likes to cook, so I just don't, unless, like, I really have to. Like, I can. I have the ability. But Hello. Thanks for joining. Hello. Um, yeah, I was like, I should probably make mac and cheese because it's easy and like, it'll just be like one less thing for people to worry about. But. Well, what were the questions you were thinking of? Or did you want to save them for later? We can save them. Okay. Um, see, Alexandra says, I'm way behind. I'm on chapter eight, but this is a reread, so I don't mind taking my time with it. Yeah. yeah you know. I liked savoring it. I think my first read, I like devoured it in like four or five days. And I took a couple weeks this time. So, Yeah, I remember I just like ran through it the first time. Um, and then Ari says they're making burgers and homemade lemon pepper fries. Those fries sound delicious. Yeah, I really miss. I don't think they do like lemon pepper wings near me. I had them like once. They're very good. Yeah. I learned about those recently, but I think the wing place, I liked it from closed, so I haven't found a replacement. Got Middle it. of chapter 21. Yeah, Is this a I, mean, I think thing? most people gave in and finished. I know a couple people in the Discord gave in and finished, and I gave in and finished over the weekend. Well, yesterday. I mean, you, there comes a point where how do you stop? I mean, you can, but it's very difficult. I think it definitely picked up because I felt like in some sprints, I was like going very slow. And then like I got to like chapter 20 and I felt like I read like the last three chapters in like <laughs> 30 minutes. But, like I just went like bloop. Yeah, I think I finished it Sunday morning last week. Uh, Le Regina Renee also had lemon pepper wings. I'm jealous. Yeah, I was like vegetarian briefly and I tried making lemon pepper cauliflower and that was a joke. <laughs> I don't mind um, fried cauliflower with like buffalo sauce, but yeah, I don't know how it would work with the lemon pepper. It was, it existed. Thanks for joining, Adrian. Um, finished on Thursday evening. First read, now going to buy the other two books. It's a must. Highly recommend this. I think the series is fantastic. Um, and like it holds up on reread. And I think the covers are really pretty. So, oh, cool. So it is a reread. So then you know that chapter 22 is going to do some stuff to you. You're ready. <laughs> yeah, T also finished. She says, so good. Yeah, it's a wild ride. Um, and it does make so much sense on reread. Like, I didn't feel like there was anything that went to waste. And I didn't feel like there's anything where I was like, did it make sense on reread? Like, knowing everything that was to come. For the most part, I don't remember much of anything about Father Earth or the obelisks or yeah. why they don't have a moon. Um, yeah. So I can't. There are things I don't either. remember that I'm excited to be told again because I do remember being satisfied. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Alexandra says ending of the book is so heartbreaking. Would have saw her to stop reading the last few chapters. Yeah, the ending of the book. I was dreading the ending of the book. I originally thought it was at the two third mark, and then I was at the end. I was like, no, yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah. I was quite earlier, so I can get it over with because this is my least favorite part of the story, or one of them. Yeah. 
So how are people feeling about the next set of sprints? Do you want to do 25 minutes again or do you want to go a little longer? Like I can do either or I'm for sure finishing the short story in the next one. It says I only have 16 minutes left on the Kindle. So, um, so also says so story heated up in this week's chapters. Yeah. It got it got intense. <laughs> I feel like it's always so tense because our characters never get to feel safe no matter where we are in the story. Like we get very few moments of true peace. Yeah. I think at this point though, like things start to like before we're like learning a lot of stuff and like there's a lot of unanswered questions and like in these chapters a lot of questions get answered and a lot of things yeah. start like rolling along. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of um confrontation and reveals and okay, tell me your real secret. And stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I I didn't realize the like some of the reveals about the relationships between all the narrating characters like until like it was like announced like this is the relationships between all the characters and I feel kind of silly because I feel like at least like in the chapter previous I should have been able to figure it out like there was a point at which I should have been like oh <laughs> that's how you two know each other no yeah I, I think the thing you're talking about I was unfortunately like spoiled for but it still didn't like hamper my enjoyment of reading it my first read and on yeah. the second read, you can really pick it apart. I feel like, honestly, of all the secrets that are revealed, it's like a good secret, but it's not the big secret by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Secrets, whoa. Yeah. Um, everything about the obelisks were my favorite parts about the next two books. Obelisks In this, are pretty great. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm most excited to see when the adaptation happens. I want to see the obelisks in the sky. I'm like really excited to like visually get it. Hey, Kay, thanks for joining. Um, no, oh, sorry. Tonky, yeah. <laughs> so that was this section, okay. Because I was like, yeah. I think, like, I missed it on the first read. On the second read, I thought I knew, but, like, it didn't feel obvious, but I, like, was like, I feel like I have this memory. <laughs> yeah. Now, speaking of the, um, what they're going to look like, N.K. Jemison announced that she is going to be adapting the series, um, was it for TV or was it for movie? I thought it was for TV. I think it's TV. It okay. looks like it was going to be like a mini series type thing, which honestly I feel like is the correct medium for this. I story. think that makes the most sense. I think I'm, I feel it could be hard to squeeze this into a a movie. I feel like they'd need to break it up. I'm curious about how she'll choose to change the narrative frame because she's going to have to like things that work for this book in the way that it's. Oh yeah, it's going to be really <laughs> obvious. Like it, yeah, there's some things like, that like. Wait a second, these people look. <laughs> you can hide it. Like, um, there are some stories that I know like accidentally show you like nonlinear timelines and you don't know it till later. Like mm -hmm. you can do it, but I'm curious if they'll choose to. Since like you said, like it's a cool narrative trick, but it doesn't matter. Like that's not the cool stuff. Yeah. Thing my opinion like i wonder if the part where it's like you do such and such if it's going to be like a point of view type thing like um and voiceover or something um like how they film it like almost yeah. like you know with call of duty where it's like oh you're the person you oh, know, okay. doing. i wonder if maybe they might do something like that to hide some of the stuff but that seems like a lot of work i feel like yeah i'm not gonna do that i bet they're gonna do more like you know the second book changes the point of views a tiny bit i think it'll be more like that mm. I mean, I don't know. We'll see what she does. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I trust, I trust her to make sure it's the version she wants it to be for this medium. I know it's going to be different. I yeah. just accept that at this point. Okay, so as I feel like a mini series or TV is the best form. Plus, TV gives you better budget. Yeah. Um, Adrian says it was such an interesting world. Never had anything like it. That I hadn't either. This yeah. What I want it to be if it's TV, since everything's like streaming TV these days. I actually don't know which company bought it i can't remember i would want it to be like releases every week like start like how um, handmaid's tale does it give you two or three episodes to start and then it's a weekly release so people can like discuss so things like online and, yeah. like, so we can have more like speculating and stuff yeah because that's like how things get in the zeitgeist and people like get all excited if you drop it all at once i feel like it's like a flash in the pan and i want it more mm. i want it to have more time than that Yeah, I just don't know which Sony. I don't know which streaming site Sony has. Um, I don't either. Money, and I'm sure it has money in one of the streaming sites. I just don't know which corporation owns Sony. So, yeah, it doesn't. Fortunately, it doesn't say in the article which which service yeah. we did it. So, 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, casting of characters would, would ruin some things. <laughs> Unless it's like one of the... Well, I guess I can't really talk about that because people... Yeah. Not well, there, I think... Yeah, I don't know. I some I don't think... Did we ever get a casting call when people in the Discord were talking about who would um be... Is, how do you pronounce her name? It's Y-K-K-A. Is it... I've been saying Yuka. That's probably not Yuka. right. I have no clue. No one, no one had one for that yet. Yeah. Um, well, I wasn't sure who it could be because I actually can't remember the age. But like Viola Davis came like to my mind, but I kind of wouldn't mind her for like a soon either. So I have no clue. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was thinking we could start the next set of sprints. Um, oh, I like this see. stream. Yeah. <laughs> see you in 35 minutes, everybody.
Okay, that was time. Um, I was reading everybody. Mine was good. I finished the short story and I I liked it. it it's it's one of those ones where the writing didn't work so well, super well for my brain, but I liked all the world building. So, um, oh, hey, and Jerry and Neeks. So many people showed up. He says they're reading one really good. Um, That's great. How about you with your carnival creepy book? It's fine. Um, I wasn't doing that most of the time. I was listening to The Hustle per your instructions. <laughs> it it's is just a, a catchy song. disco. I just can't believe you didn't know it. Um, and then I got some uh, iced tea from the fridge, and then I did some reading. Nice. Um, so the questions I well, first my first question was: Is there like a male equivalent to the Miss Universe pageants? I know there's a Mister Universe, but I think it's like just bodybuilding. I didn't know if there was like an equivalent where it's like a personality component as well. Yeah, I think the bodybuilding is probably the closest, but that, like you said, it doesn't have the whole, like, hmm. I don't know. I, I barely know much about Miss Universe other than for a while, apparently, like, Venezuela did well. But <laughs> that's all. Okay. I just asked because I was trying to formulate one of my uh, discussion questions, but I guess we're just going to have to make do with analogies. I mean, so. yeah, male beauty pageants. There's Man of the World. Manhunt International, Mr. International, Mr. World. So I guess there are a few. I just don't think they're well known. Manhunt International. I don't like the sound of that. This is just what Wikipedia gave me. Okay. <laughs> she says she doesn't think so. I don't. I wasn't really expecting to, but I was like, maybe. Because I feel like they do like scholarships and stuff where it's kind of like that. But I guess it's besides the point. My discussion question was. It's Festival Day in Miyav. They're having the Mr. Miyav um, beauty pageant where there's going to be a, a, a judging based on looks and personality. And you're the judge, um, or one of them. And as we both know, Alabaster and Enon are two of the finest men on the island of Miyav. And so they're in the finals. They're the two finalists. Who do you vote for? Or my is based on looks and personality. Enon. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Alabaster is a little skinny. I, and not is so. And not. To, um, cyanide. You I, I mean, like disagree. Well, and I mean, yeah, and I guess. No, no, this is hands down. That's who I would want to date. So. <laughs> Meek says he non. Meek says he non. I didn't know if Alabaster's appreciative admirers were gonna like come through with the the votes for Alabaster. I, mean, I like Alabaster, but I I don't think he would win a beauty pageant. Damn, poor Alabaster. I don't think he'd really care. I feel like he'd be kind of annoyed if he made it that far. Uh yes, Salter agrees. Also, Salter said something before we went to sprints, but I don't remember what it was. But I remember it. <laughs> of course, that got Neeks's attention. Um, Salter said, yeah, leader cuz is taking that crown. Bastard sweep, but he's not slain personality. Maybe he'd win a father of the year award. He is uh, one, the best parent of the trio, I think, in terms of, like, the kid right. is his, his number one priority, I guess. So maybe not yeah. best parent. That feels like a weird way to frame it. But the kid is his number one priority. Yeah. Sure. Sorry, who did you say had said something earlier? I'm looking. Salter was talking about it had to do with um, Yiko oh, or whatever. Yeah. Um, one of the other characters in her greeting party called her Yeek or Yeeks for short. Yeah. So, because I think that confirmed your pronunciation. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Neek says, Alabaster would be mad someone entered him. He's done with everyone's nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he would definitely be like pouty the whole time, but like I thought that they said in the book that he does kind of like the attention. Like he does like people like, um, well, I like, maybe not attention, but he does like that people like will like grab his hand or like invite him dancing and stuff. Like he likes, yeah, like he he's touch like starved him. for sure. Yeah. Um, he likes that people don't fear him and like want to make, embrace him literally. Like yeah, that's... he'd be. I think he'd be touched, but he'd also be very annoyed. <laughs> or because I like Alabaster really on the shit. Yeah. Now, does this pageant make them use their powers? Because Alabaster would have a better show with his powers. Mm, that could be a component because they do really <laughs> like Rajni on the island of Miav. 
I'm just saying Alabaster has more tricks. Yeah. Well, I don't think Anani could really do anything. He, like, like, he would accidentally, like, wipe something out trying to show off his yeah. passion. <laughs> I remember he, didn't he teach Cyanite something? But I can't remember what it was, but. I don't think he, I can't remember. He taught her the power of love <laughs> and how to be vulnerable. <laughs> I don't remember him teaching her any orogeny. Might have taught Poor her that, um, piracy. Might have taught her some of that, too. Yeah. I'd have to look back. It was obviously not like a big thing because he like couldn't do the stuff she could do on the boat, like with the yeah. mist and everything. Yeah, I can't remember. I remember I thought Alabaster had taught her about moving water. Was that maybe Anon instead? Might have been Anon. Okay. Um, so I think that's like a basic level, but it's different enough that when you're not around water, you don't like play with it or practice yeah. it. Like she said it was like kind of difficult, but it was like vaguely similar. Yeah. In the Oniques. <laughs> Posted it in. <laughs> OP best dad. <laughs> <laughs> I just, he's so gregarious and loud and like, I don't know. He would definitely, like, my introverted self, if I was dating him, would be overwhelmed at times because he's such an extrovert, but I could also just sit in a corner and just watch him tell stories and it'd be I like, I feel like that's what Cyanide does, though. Because it was just she, like, he's always loud. Like, he's in this cavern with an echo and he's still yelling. <laughs> Uh, who did people cast for him in the Discord again? I loved all the casting um, that people were putting up there. Oh, gosh, let me find it. Oh, gosh, I don't reckon. Uh, T suggested Mike Coulter for Enon. Okay. His face looks familiar, but I don't know what he's in. In terms of personality, I feel like maybe John Boyega. That might be. I haven't actually seen him perform anything, but I feel like personality-wise, he might be able to pull it off. I mean, I've seen him play a whole range of roles, so I'm sure... I mean, I trust any actor worth their salt can play almost any role, I guess. <laughs> salt says Enon would kill it as a mall sandwich. Alabaster would been the best dad. He would be a great mall sandwich. I feel like he might scare some of the Shire kids, though. You know, always always get those kids where they're like, I don't know. I don't know. I was a kid who was like, I said I would like to take pictures with like the people in costumes that I met the people in costumes and I cried the whole time. I feel like he might scare some of those kids just a little yeah. bit. But... I think that was me at Disney World too. I, I I got scared of all the costumes and all the thunder. My mom didn't realize how many things at Disney World had thunder. <laughs> uh, I feel like Disney World would be miserable. I don't know. For me as a kid, it just seems so overwhelming and it's like hot and like I I couldn't do Disney World as a kid. I haven't it's done it. It, I haven't had a good time. I went once when I was three because I was free. Well, I was before three, so I was free. So mom took me. So I don't remember it. And then once when I was 12 and I got strep throat. So obviously I wasn't doing much. I was just in the hotel room. Um, um, he said, you know, I've got different skills. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> oh, the powers are in play. The Nina is getting washed by Aldaster. Yeah. Um, okay. It was like they had like a fighting game with all the origins in the story. Um, I loved all the science stuff you posted in the Discord because I was thinking about doing one of my science behind the magic I was on it. Ask you you were done. I was looking through your videos, so like this seems right up Angela's. I album. wanted to when I first started it last year, but it had been too long since I read it, and I couldn't quite remember how the magic worked. And now you've compiled it all for me, so I'll probably yeah. do that in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was kicking my butt though because I was like do they have this for lay people like it really hasn't been that long since I was an intro cam and I'm like lattice structures and crystals what is this no mean? those, those are complicated today. like because it's abstract and you don't get it's complicated I probably won't go in depth that but I part of the issue is like I want to reformat how I do those videos that'll be way harder for me but you know sometimes you don't have the spoons <laughs> like yeah. I can talk to a camera about books easy but like the teaching of science and getting the graphics and doing what I want to do, that's going to be more a labor of love because it's not going to perform well either. So it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but yeah, it's fine. Like I don't really care if it performs well, this is still purely a hobby, but it just means that I have to make sure I'm enjoying the time I put into it. Yeah. Alexandra says, I feel like Alabaster is really trying to be the best sad with this kid because he never had the chance to meet any of his other children. Yeah. Definitely. I was, Alabaster just wants to stay home and mind his business. Like, he would just be so happy as a house husband. And no one wants that for him. No one wants to let him just stay home and mind his business. 
Um, Soldier says, I think Alabas was always being the best dad he could be with doing the extra work to unburden his potential kids as much as possible. Um, I see, I'm not alone. Yeah. Huh? It's just an abstract thing. And whenever something's abstract, um, teaching it's hard because by definition, you don't have something tangible to latch onto to make the concepts come across. That's why like algebra can be hard to teach mm. and things like that. But if like you connect with it, suddenly you have an in but then it can be hard to teach the other person the language. Mm, I think it's like mostly the language because I feel like concept wise, it's not too complicated. Like basically I bring this up um, in the discord. I had posted like how orogeny works. It's basically just energy manipulation um, following the law of conservation of energy. I'm not going to recap it all here because um, it's going to <laughs> make me sound real silly. Um, but basically origins manipulate energy. So when they use heat, that's mostly uh, kinetic energy because heat is just like from particles moving. Um, I think when they use like fault lines and stuff, that is potential energy um, because of how plate tectonics work. Like I'm gonna try and show, but like basically the plates are like this and they're like sliding and sliding. And then sometimes like a slip happens and then it releases the kinetic energy as an earthquake. And so like there's energy building up when it's just like rubbing and they can use that for um, yeah. orogeny. And a stone eater had said that crystals are good for storing energy. And I was explaining why in the discord. Um, basically, I guess it's another form of potential energy, but um, matter is made up, matter stuff is made up of particles, a lot of like atoms bonding together in different ways. And crystals um, have a very regular structure. Like the atoms are put together in like a very like repetitive, usually like pretty simple geometric shape. And so they can pack a lot in a certain amount of space. And so there's also like a lot of energy in the bonds. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I forget the equation. I can't really explain the equation now, but basically the amount of energy is proportional to like charges of the ions in the bond. And then also like how close they are, I thought. Um, yeah. But basically I thought of something about <laughs> how the crystals were put together that like meant that it could store a lot more um, energy as opposed to like something like glass or wood or such and such. Um, yeah, so it is very complicated and difficult to explain it. and I'm annoyed because I feel like I should be able to explain it better because it feels like it wasn't that long ago, but I guess it's like almost a decade at this point for me. Um, <laughs> I think you explained it pretty well, or at least the the surface level minus That's all you really need for reading this book. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. We're not going to be whipping out whiteboards and doing the equations in this read along. It's not that type of read along. Yeah, um, no. But I think part of it also too, and I mean, this has to do with like conservation of energy. Is like they li like origins are a way to trigger something into a state of entropy, which is what things want to be in, and they can sometimes be like a fast forward. So when something's stored in a crystal. That's when actually very entropy, ordered, and then you know. can release it and make things crazy. But yeah, I think you did a great job explaining it. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is, you just said entropy, and that just reminded me of another fantasy series I like, but that's not really relevant to this discussion. No, tell me, tell me, tell me. Um, it was. It's an older series. It's, what is it? I think it's the, was it Young Magicians by Diane Duani? I've is heard it? of it, I haven't read it. Okay. That one's interesting. Um, basically, what I learned like, as a kid is that my brain wanted to be a physics major before I wanted to, because all the fantasy books I read had science-based magic, but I didn't know that. That's funny. <laughs> like, but now as an adult, as I look back, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, that one, it's basically good versus evil, but it's more like order versus entropy. Um, entropy is just kind of like general chaos, right? Like there's yeah, a science means, thing behind how you can measure Everything's it, going towards a state of entropy because being in disorder takes less energy than being in order. So to revert back to a state in order, you have to apply more energy, but we're in a fixed system. Um, a really good short story for that kind of discussion is Exhalation by Ted Chang. And it's pretty short, but it, it okay. talks about entropy really concisely. In that okay. But I also remember that I like the magic system in that because it's very similar to coding. Um, yeah. Like it's a system where words have power and it's basically like if you want to make a spell, you basically write their version of code and like run it. I love that. Written magic is, I don't know if it's underrated, but it's like my favorite thing. I love it a lot. 
Um, I think I had like one more question before we can start the next sprint. Um, a season approaches. Would you rather wait it out in Castrima or Eumenes? Well, did this is this like a season where it triggered in Eumenes? <laughs> it's not triggered. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and the one you're mentioning is that the one with Yeeks? Oh uh, yeah, that's where okay. that's where Yeeks lives. Castrima. Am I an origin or am I standard normie person? That's up to you. Because I feel like it's obvious if I'm an origin, I should be in the one with Yeeks because I'm not going to be making it very well in Eumenes. Um, But Eumenes seems to have had a really good track record. So if I'm just like no powers, basic civilian, and it's not being triggered there, then yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I forgot. Eumenes doesn't have... Um... <laughs> so I'll just add way out the wrong as in them. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot that Eumenes doesn't have, or however you say it, doesn't have the cash stores. And we, at this point in time, we don't know what happens to the Guardians and the Origins during a season. We just know that there's no cash food for them. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. It doesn't look like when there's a season, Origins are valued based off what yeah. we've read so far. Nick says, send me with the horse. <laughs> Castrima. I think for me, Castrema would be better just from a society standpoint, but I also don't know if I could make it because it's all underground and there's crystals everywhere. I, I'm not super duper clumsy, but like I would definitely be concerned <laughs> that it's been like a long period of time in Castrema. Like, I mean, real talk, it's whatever I'm closest to. I think because travel seems like it takes a while. And I'd like to think like what um, someone was talking about how like the society is good and I agree. I like what Eeks is trying to do, but it's like if it's a season, a season is like probably the best time to do that change, but it's also the most fragile. And like, I want stability, like hardcore when there's an apocalypse. So I don't know. He's also joining you in Eumenes. I mean, it's Eumenes is corrupt, but so is everywhere. So I don't know. Well, Streama isn't yet. Sure. At this point in the story, from what I remember. No, it's not at this point. But here's the thing, right? You read the fifth season up to that point, and you're like, oh, look at this thing that could be wonderful and beautiful. And I don't know, as when I first read the story, not to say what actually happens, this was just what happened when I first read it. I'm like, man, how's Jemison going to break my heart with this? I mean, so I feel like it's just common sense. And okay, Jemison gives you a good thing and then takes it away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's her and like Robin Hobb. Anytime you see something good, don't like latch on to it. Or you can, but heartbreak everywhere. <laughs> uh, those are all the discussion questions I have now. Do you want to do another 35 minute sprint or do you want to up it? Um, we can up it unless you want to do 35 minutes. I've got books for days. Um, I'll wait to see what people in the comments think, but I think I'd like to up it to like 45. I got that. I can do that. I'm also re trying to read this really chonky fantasy. So 45 might get me to where I want to be in this stupid book today. It's, I am actually liking it, but it's, it's, it has such small print. Oh, I don't like that. They I don't can... sell these in like nicer copies. So. Wait, sorry. Did you show it? I, I was, Oh, like, it's just, um, it's a Malazan book. It's called memories of ice. Oh, okay. This is like one of those like fantasy series that Redditors always love. On the fantasy oh. Reddit. I don't know what to make that. <laughs> Jesus, I'm just going to bed when the season happens. <laughs> I'm <laughs> finding if the stone eaters will look out for me or something. <laughs> I was in study breaking my heart through the series. Honestly, anytime a good thing happens, it just gets snatched away. Alexandra's voting for 45 minutes. <laughs> Borkwis says it's 40, not 45, it's 46. 45 <laughs> for me isn't a curse number. For me, 53 is a curse number. Every time I see 53, I'm like, eh. Okay. I don't know the context for the number you don't like. Um, I think that was the percentage of white women who voted for Oh, people. yeah. That, that. that was just like a number that was around a lot. And now I'm like, every time my computer buries at 53%, I'm like, eh, I don't like this number. <laughs> Make it something else. Um, people don't like the number 45. Let's do... I'll just arbitrarily start it some other time with a 45 minute. I'm about to say, just start it, pause it, and it won't be a 45 anymore, and then go. <laughs> <laughs> 43 is... 43.59 is what the timer uh, 
landed on. There we go. Everyone happy we've avoided most cursed numbers, I think. I think we avoid pretty much every number, actually. <laughs> Wait, no, that's a lie. 59 could be cursed and I wouldn't know. Uh, okay, well, happy reading, everybody.
Okay, that was our 43 minute and 59 second sprint. <laughs> How did it go for people? Um, I read a short story by Silvia Moreno Garcia, which was good, but I also didn't know what was happening most of the time. It was only like a six minute story, so I don't know. I think I know what happened, but it was definitely one where I didn't really know what was happening. Okay. Story I was reading is getting it's getting interesting. Um there's some um romantic disputes going on. Um Oya has appeared. What else? Oh Stephanie St. Clair has also appeared. She was a, a number runner. I don't really know what that was. I think it's illegal gambling. But mm -hmm. I was just excited to recognize the names and wrote another short story about her somewhere else. Yeah, I feel like I remember that one too. Was that also in Sunspot Jungle? That was in Sunspot Jungle, yeah. Yeah. Um, I Made People Do Bad Things by Cheshire Burke. Yeah, I liked that one. That one's I really, really like that one. That one yeah. was intense. And those collections, so much gold in there. I really like that. Um, yeah. So, in terms, people can sound off in the comments and I'll like, you know, talk about it if you have anything to say. But I had a couple more questions. Um, and also, um, how did you feel about doing like one more short sprint? Or do you think that was enough sprinting for today? It's up to you guys. I can do whatever. I'll probably have to take out my contacts, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't know what time zone you're in. I assume Eastern, but yeah, I'm in Eastern standard. Um, yeah, I could maybe do like one more sprint after this, like a shorter one, like a 25 minute one or something like that. But um, yeah. So comments. That might actually help me get to the page goal I have for on this one. So nice. Yeah. But what's uh, the question? So I was just wondering if you had been in the folk room and Beanoff had showed up, would you have helped her? I'm trying to think of myself. So Demaya and I probably would have handled that situation. Like we handled the way Demaya handled the fulcrum is similar to how I would have, which is just try to be the best I could be at stuff. But I don't know. I don't know. She was really lonely, wasn't she? Yeah. I don't know. I tend to be a person who gets really stressed about breaking rules. And that felt like a pretty big rule breaker, but also like mysteries. I don't know. I feel like I wasn't very curious as a kid, so I don't know. Like I did like having my own stuff, so I think I would have been wandering around, but also like, I don't know if I would have helped me off. Um, yeah. But I also don't know yeah, what I would have done to get rid of her, you know? Yeah. Well, and I think that's also part of it, right? Like there was a moment in which Demaya could have followed the rules and then she didn't, so now she was like kind of accidentally complacent anyways, so would have been yeah. in trouble no matter what. Yeah, because I feel like I wouldn't have been able to shoo her away. So I don't know if I would have just like gone with her to try and keep her quiet or if I would have. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Geraldine, she says, about to start chapter 10. Yes to an initial sprint. Allowing my bomb to avoid any spoilers. Um, we shouldn't really be talking about spoiler stuff, but you know, if you yeah. want to know like anything, anything, but the best. Yeah. Um, Walter says <laughs> Leader Chico would have been snitched on. They were killing recruits for less. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's really... I think it's kind of just one of those moments that gets away from you. But I'm trying to think if there was ever a moment in my life where a situation like spiraled and I like went along with it without getting out of it successfully. I don't know. I feel like that happens to me frequently. Like, not, like, to that extent, but I feel like I'm, like, oh, maybe if I'm just, like, <laughs> boring or something, this situation will go away, and it's, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, chapter 22. Chapter 22, man. What's the chapter title? Oh, I don't remember. It's a cyanide chapter, though. Um, I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, my book is downstairs, so I won't be able yeah. to get it. But if you want to share the chapter title, if it's not a spoiler, we can yeah. show everybody. I think it pretty much does. I think I, my guess is something break or breaks with cyanide. I, I think it's one of those. 
I love the chapter titles. Like an earlier one is like one is Cyanite finds a toy, right? And then the other one's she breaks the toy. Yeah. I just love that. I remember what was one the band's not getting back together. I forget what happens in that chapter. Cyanite fractured. I was close. Yeah, that chapter gave me some good discussion questions for the final um, yeah. live. My oh, last, yeah. sorry. Oh. No, go ahead. My last like discussion question is, um, so you're taking a member of the stillness on vacation to a new city. Who do you think is going to give you the most secondhand embarrassment, Tonky or Alabaster? When you're sightseeing. <sighs> And this is not during a season, right? This is like normal times. This is just normal times. Then I think Alabaster. Because hmm. I feel like Tonky has good like social skills, like sometimes a little blunt and too curious. But I think most of the problems is more just it's a season. So like there's a lot of hygienic stuff that's been a problem for them. And like Alabaster just like has minimal social skills. For good reason, I guess. But still, yeah. I think he would give me more embarrassment. <laughs> T says Tonky. Oh, sorry, that was about Henry. T says Tonky. Adrian says Alabaster. Um, Henry says Tonky. Um, I wasn't even really thinking about the stillness per se. I was just thinking about like somehow they like morph up in my house and they're like, oh, like let's go to the nearest Philly, uh, nearest Philly, nearest city to you. Um, and I was just thinking about showing them around. Um, for me, like I feel like I feel like Alabaster doesn't like new things. He's a homebody. He would be like, what am I doing here? I want to be, I don't be doing this stuff. But I feel like Tonky would just ask so many questions that it would get difficult. Like I could not take Tonky in the museum. We would just never leave. Um, actually, that might be good because she could probably just like entertain herself. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think I can, because I'm also a person who likes to ask questions, I think I would be able to feel more comfortable with telling Tonky, hey, that's it for now. Like in 30 minutes, ask me another question. Whereas I just think like Alabaster just will be upset and uncomfortable and take that out on everyone around him because he does have this like superiority complex sort of thing. I don't know. Salter says Tonky seems way more random. Yeah, I feel like Tonky also might make people more uncomfortable than Alabaster. Like if it was just in the context of like, people don't know what orogeny is. So they're not like going like, oh wow, that guy has 10 rings. I should be afraid. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I feel like Tonky looks at everyone like a science experiment. I feel like that would get her in trouble. <laughs> yeah. I don't That's know. Something. I like Tonky. <laughs> I mean, I like Alabaster too. I don't have an issue with Tonky. I just think that. Yeah. She feels like I don't know. I think I, I appreciate blunt people. Like, in charge of helping her find stuff in a new place. I yeah. think she would get me in trouble more than Alabaster would. I think it would be easier for me to stand up for Tonky than I would Alabaster. Like, I feel like if Tonky gets in trouble, it's not their fault. It's just that people don't like blunt, weird things or whatever. And if Alabaster does get someone upset, I feel like it will be more his fault and it would be harder for me to defend his actions. Maybe how I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or like Jesus I feel like and Tonky smells. I but I think that's that. just because it's the a questionable season. hygiene is also a thing. Because <laughs> Tonky didn't smell like I don't know. I think that's because she did season. smell when they got back into Castrima. Like they, I thought that was part of the thing was like that people didn't want to be in a room with her, or at least Cyanide didn't want to be room. Sorry, not, not until she bathed. But I thought it was okay after she bathed. I don't know. I don't. I'm not positive. <laughs> <laughs> Tonky's <laughs> legs. <laughs> I think also I just like that Tonky's so inquisitive and curious, and I would love to take them to a museum and like, especially like a place with a bunch of gemstones. I think it'd be fun at a natural history museum or something. I think it'd be a good time. Adrian says alabaster won't carry you there. Um, I think there's a method to Tonky's madness. There is a method. I just, I don't know. I feel like I would take her places and she would be staring too much at people. And I think she would like ask a lot of questions that I couldn't answer. And I think that I wouldn't be able to show her around for very long. I would give her a cell phone and then she would just stare at the phone. 
There's a whole lot of Google there. I think That's Tonky true. would take advantage of Google. I think you can treat Tonky like a five-year-old if you really needed to. Give her an iPad. That's what I'm worried about because I mean, I'm not good at <laughs> taking five-year-olds places. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I, I'm used to having really blunt sciencey friends who are a little weird. So I think I'm just used to it. <laughs> Or I maybe I am that person and I'm just defending myself. Who knows? <laughs> do, do. So should we do that last sprint? Yeah, I'm pulling up the 25 minute timer. Cool. I'm gonna take out my contacts and then read. Okay. Uh, I, I still have my copy of The Unbroken next to me. It just makes me so happy. Mm -mm. So much joy. Did you just finish it or? I finished it yesterday. Yesterday, okay. Yeah, but I I bought it Tuesday. That's interesting. He says I like Tonky at first, but by the end, nope. I don't remember enough about Tonky's arc to comment. I don't know. If she, hmm. I oh, remember gosh. a lot of people being complicated, so I could see how that could happen. There's yeah. a lot of human problems going on in this series. I think I disliked her more in the second book. So in that one, I remember her meddling had some pretty big consequences. Adrian, it's so good. You're talking about this this one, right? It's it's at least I think it's I think it's good. It's very obviously good. books are subjective. So. <laughs> Whatever. I have to always remind myself that if someone doesn't like a book I like, they're not saying I have bad taste. So, but I do think that like, if you like the intentionality of Jemison, C.L. Clark is also very intentional in a lot of the stuff they put together. So I like yeah. that. Okay, yeah, it was that one Adrian says. Cool. Uh, I'm trying to remember what Tonky did. I can't, I I'll just wait for it to happen. Oh, I think I mean, deception and um, ignoring people's boundries. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like the yeah, second book's yeah, the yeah, one I'm going to be yeah, like... She, wasn't, she didn't do a very good job explaining why she was doing it. <laughs> yeah. I think communication skills are not great for anyone if we're comparing especially Tonky and Alabaster. If Alabaster just keeps it inside and is like cryptic. Yeah. Tonky has way more to do in the second book. I, I think so, yeah. Like, I the remember second the second book, book I was like, okay, Tonky, that's enough out of you. <laughs> this is too much. Um. Oh. Oh, good. I'll be in tomorrow to start the Good Love Girls. I've been meaning to read that. I've heard good things. but I haven't Me too. I haven't read that one either. But my, a lot of my friends tell me I, they think I'll like it. So I'm always just very picky about the young adult books I do read because I want to love them. And yeah. Since it's not like the age group I read as often. Yeah. I just realized that I, young adult's not my thing. And so I just have to be very picky very about what I pick up. Otherwise, I'm just going to be putting myself through a bad reading experience. Because I'm also bad about DNFing. Like, I feel like obligated to finish most of the stuff that I start, even though like, I'll be like 30 pages in and I'm like, this is a three star <laughs> best. I think um, T might be talking about this book based off of a recent comment. Confirm uh, if this is for just yeah, the fifth season or yeah, for the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, that, um, that was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, it was a bit. I don't know. I think for me, it's just how Tonky looks at people. I feel like I wouldn't get along with her. Um, it's That's always mentioned that she's looking at people like she's greedy and like um, she wants to like know stuff. And I think that would make me very uncomfortable. Yeah, I do think Tonky has not spent a lot of time reflecting, partially because of their position in life and like what their interests are. Like they haven't been trained by society or themselves good social cues in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I have the timer up. All righty. Get to read and I'll see y'all in 25 minutes.
so that was time. Um, reading going well? Yeah, almost yeah. finished it. Oh, sorry if you're hearing loud noises. Hockey's intense right now. <laughs> Wait, where are they playing hockey at? Uh, they're it's What's Bruins the versus the Islanders. It's um, playoff hockey. Oh, I didn't know it went into summer. Yeah, it's the same season as basketball. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, so. Everything's going well for me. Um, I think I'll just wait around for like five minutes or so to see if people have comments to share, and then after that, I can log off. Sounds good. Yeah, but as I said, change it to my glasses. My eyes can only do contacts for so long. Do you have the disposables, or do you have, like clean? I do. Um, they're monthlies, but I use them every two weeks, or I use them till they feel like I need to replace them. I don't do dailies. Okay. I don't do contacts anymore, but I used to have them for sports, and I just did the dailies because I think they're a little easier to get in and out. I think they're a little thicker. I, I mean. I've been wearing contacts, so I've been wearing glasses since I was in kindergarten, so when they let me have contacts, I was like, yes. <laughs> so I've been wearing those since seventh grade. And my eyes, luckily, they're like a good shape and size, and they're really breathable now. So, But I just trained myself to not be scared of my fingers. <laughs> it wasn't really the putting it in. It was just like getting it out mostly. Like mm -hmm. I would get like worried that I, I don't know, sometimes I couldn't remember taking them out or I couldn't find it and so I was like I'm assuming it's not in because I can't see right but oh I'm very blind so I know if it's in or out it's um I can't read books without my glasses I used to be able to like just right here but my focal planes I like, got my nose oh wow. so mm -hmm. I don't know that life but now if you kind of like look at my face in the screen you can like you know how when glasses prescriptions get heavier it like shrinks someone's face in it yeah <laughs> so um, I think it will be. <laughs> All of them too lazy and dirty to wear contacts. Contacts are work. Oh, nice. Just finished book one. Um, he says, will there be a live chat discussion at the end of each book? Thank you for bringing this up. Um, so I had originally planned to have like a brief sprint at the um, discussion next week. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, it seems like people are already done for the most part. So I was like, Maybe it's just like a 15 minute sprint for people who really need the time. And then we just do the questions or maybe do people think we should just do discussion questions? I won't be there because I will be at a family event, mm -hmm. but it does seem like a lot of people have finished. You could probably put a poll in the discord, but that's true. Cause um, I think this week's chapters were just 22 to the end, right? Or 21 yeah, 21 mm -hmm. to the end. But, which they fly by if you are, I don't know, captivated by the story. Yeah. So basically to answer your question to, yeah, there's going to be a live chat discussion at the end of each book. Um, I'm going to come up with like, I'm going to come up with like discussion questions. So like if you see any of my lives, like my dreaming, was it Killing Moon Live with like Neeks or like, a live show I did for Black as Evathon group book on the Jumbies. It's going to be kind of like a similar format. Um, or I would come up with discussion questions and like I would probably be monitoring the chat to bring in people's opinions or questions. Um, so you can still comment and stuff. It's all the, yeah, let's talk about the pirate getting all the booty in the world. <laughs> I think this is my, the first book that had like um, a polyamorous relationship that I had read, and I was just like, huh, okay, here we go. <laughs> I was yeah, unprepared. Same. <laughs> like, it's more common now when I read, but I think in terms of mainstream fantasy, this is, like, one of the bigger ones. Unless you count, like, I don't know if Wheel of Time does it. I'm I, Who knows? People keep telling me there's a love square. I'm six books in. I don't really know what's happening. I will not be picking up those books. So you pro I, You're probably better off. It's not very good. I don't know. People... <laughs> 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 I had what was it? I just like commented on someone's video. Like it was like a throwaway com I usually leave like kind of throwaway comments after I watch, like, oh like enjoy the review just so people know that I stopped in. And on this one I was like, Oh, that's interesting hearing about like Wheel of Time because like I'd never heard of it before, but even someone's like, Yeah, it's really big among us fantasy fans. I was like, 
I'm a fantasy fan, and I never heard of this before. My uncle's a big dork, and he never mentioned this before. So I think it's not just me. <laughs> I think the whole time is internet phenomenon, and that's my opinion. I'm well, I mean, it's like anything, right? Like, you didn't know the hustle, but I wouldn't say that means you don't know any music. <laughs> well, but you would be right in saying I don't know anything about this go. Yeah. Like, well, I, like I don't know. I think fantasy, that fantasy gatekeepers are real. I don't like them. Like, I don't know. like, I feel like it would be like Lord of the Rings would be more sense to be like, oh, you probably don't read a lot of fantasy or talk to a lot of people who read a lot of fantasy because it's hard to like go in fantasy spaces and not talk about Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I literally never heard of it until like two years ago. Well, and before the show was greenlit, it wasn't sold in bookstores as commonly anymore. Because um, I mean, oh, it was. It was I mean, it, it got a resurgence when Sanderson was finishing it in the early 10s. Um, but then that after 2015, there's no more books. So, and like, you can't just shelve a 14 book series on a bookshelf unless it's like a super bestseller, which it is a very good bestseller, but it's not Lord of the Rings. It's not a song of ice and fire. It's not that level. Mm. So, um, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's perfectly serviceable questy chosen one fantasy oh no not the chosen one <laughs> I, I mean i actually have no issues with the tropes i have all I the issues like with the repetitive theming and like just cookie cutter one note characters that everyone tells me are so deep i am six books in they are not people i don't know what they are <laughs> i just don't have time i don't like chosen one fantasy and i don't like 14 book series that are like a phone book each no, I think the show will be really good because it's going to cut out a lot of that. I like that they chose to, like, infuse the show with, like, diversity that is kind of in the book, but, like, you could easily in your brain whitewash it sort of thing. So I'm excited for the show, and that's partially why I picked it up. Plus, a lot of my college friends loved it, and I was like, fine. But I just do audiobooks for it. I don't use my reading with my eye time for it because yeah. that's my favorite reading time. So. Personally, no no problem with audiobooks being your main form. I'm just bad at audio retention. <laughs> I can't do audiobooks for pretty much anything except like romances. Like I haven't tried doing a contemporary, but like I can listen okay to a romance audiobook. But like I tried to, I just couldn't do it. Like I tried to do a, was it Kabu Kabu by Nydia Kapoor? Mm -hmm. Cause I think my library doesn't have a hard copy and it was literally like five minutes and I was like, I can't just play this in the background while I'm doing other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just not um, anything. Adrian, I have read Skyward. I've read every Sanderson book. I have some regrets about the young adults, not Skyward, but um, his Reckoner series. Oops. But what's your what's limit? my limit book number on a series? Um, I... I don't think I actually have a hard limit. I think I just DNF if I think it's too long and I'm bored. <laughs> like, um, I don't really care. I think the Dresden Files is a little long for me. Um, I don't know how many books are in it. That's how, I think if I don't know how many books are in a series and I haven't started the series already, I get intimidated and I just won't. Um, especially if it's still going, so. For me, I don't have a limit per se. It's just like if a book is gonna be over three books in a series like I need to be hearing like stellar reviews and I have to think that I'm really gonna like it like I'm not just gonna casually pick up like an unknown book yeah and something that's like 14 books long that doesn't sound like it really interests me I wish I could hybrid read Salter I've tried but my brain apparently doesn't read at a consistent speed physically and the audiobook goes at a consistent speed and <laughs> it's a problem yeah then we wouldn't be guessing how to say Yika's name well, and then, so I'm sure some narrators are better than others, but like you could have a whole series that was narrated by different people per books yeah. and they all pronounce things differently anyways. Like, I don't think all the time, sometimes for sure, they are ask the author, how is this pronounced? And like, I've heard authors talk like, I don't know how these words are pronounced, do what you want. <laughs> like, so. Well, that makes me feel better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I only do audiobooks through my library and I think that whatever service they use has like a cap on how quickly you can make it go. So like, I don't know if I can make it go any faster than like, is it 1.5 or two times speed? Libby lets you go at least two, it might be two and a half. 
Um, do I have a favorite series? A favorite completed series is the Broken Earth trilogy. Like a favorite completed set. I don't think anything else. Maybe His Dark Materials is close for nostalgia reasons. My favorite ongoing series is the Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. I don't know if I have a favorite series. I feel like I read a lot of standalones. That's so probably better for your health, honestly. I read too many series. <laughs> I've also done a lot of tier ranking videos lately. So these have been in like my head because I've had uh, to like rank favorites. Got it. So yeah, yeah. But I think those are my favorites. Was interesting. It was just interesting because I think it was big around the same time as Harry Potter, right? Yeah, when I, I actually picked it up because I had read Harry Potter growing up and I went to the bookstore and I'm like, I like Harry Potter, bookseller, give me a book that I would also like. And they gave me Aragon and the Golden Compass, which is called something else if you're in the UK. Oh. I think. Northern yeah. Lights or something. I don't know. But I thought I would hate the Golden Compass because I didn't like the cover and I thought I'd love Aragon and it was the reverse. Okay. <laughs> so. People haven't read Aragon. It's just Lord of the Rings, the remix, basically. I think, think that's like the book that really trained me into hating when an author lied about how long a series would be. Like to the question of how many books in a series, I don't care how many there are. I hate when I'm lied to. I hate when an author starts a series and says, yes, this will be a trilogy. And then the third book comes out, but they don't tell me till the book's out that this is actually not the finale. Um, Yikes, there's a fourth one. And that happened with that Aragon series. And I hated it. I wouldn't know about that because I gave up after the second book. I was like, this is this is a lot. And that well, was like, I had a lot of free time on my hands. I was like, this is too much for so little payoff. Well, like Wheel of Time and A Song of Ice and Fire were supposed to be shorter series. And then the authors were like, psych. I mean, that series is never getting finished, right? Well, and Wheel of Time only got finished after the author passed away by a different author. So. Got it. Yeah. And I asked about the Harry Potter thing because it was interesting rereading re it, um, his dark materials, because I remember Harry Potter was like very contentious because people were like witchcraft. Oh, yeah. My neighbors weren't allowed to read it. Like, it was like, people like were not allowed to read it in some places but like and because of religious stuff but his dark materials is like very critical of organized religion specifically of christianity and i don't remember anyone saying anything about that series which was interesting to me they i just do didn't get as much hype so people didn't really know about it yeah i mean oh, it didn't reach good. the same number of people like it's very popular by book standards but it's not harry potter popular mm -hmm. um but I don't think my neighbors were allowed to read his dark materials either. Mm. But I, I think all the organized religion hatred went for the Da Vinci Code, which came out a couple years later, I think. Very interesting. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't remember anything about the Da Vinci Code besides it being a thriller. Oh, yeah. It was a, I think it was my first thriller, and I remember reading it really fast. Yeah. It's not very <laughs> memorable. I don't yeah. remember anything about it besides, like, the priest who's, like, kind of sadistic masochistic and it's kind of yes working. yeah well, there was a lot of self-punishing flagellation and stuff yeah like I that's the word I, I wasn't sure if it was the right one so i decided to err on the side of a simpler word <laughs> that's what i do when i don't know what i'm doing and when i don't know anyone's pronouns i'm like oh, i'm just gonna use they today <laughs> everyone's getting a they <laughs> he says i have commitment issues so long series are a no that's um, valid author is not fulfilling their promise is the worst um, so far, I have in mind to only try a series when it's already complete and people will say the landing was stuck. That's, That's fair. super fair. I, I'm a big stick the landing person, like a book that doesn't stick the landing. It's a bad time, which is why most of my favorite series are series that have like are masterful beginnings and endings. Cause it like the broken earth trilogy guys, for those who haven't finished it, it's phenomenal. It's yeah. You got good stuff. Uh, yeah to like it doesn't like ruin my day if the ending stinks like i was okay with like was it a series of unfortunate events i was like that was enjoyable enough and like i just kind of naturally i think lost interest in it as it went on but yeah i think i just tend to lose interest in these longer series like i can't remember reading like a really long series as a kid that like retained my interest for the whole time like except for like the royal diaries and like dear america and like those are basically standalones. Yeah, I think when I was a kid, and we're gonna say kid is up until I'm like 12 or 13 for the sake of this conversation. I think I was only like Bailey school kids, 
Harry Potter replicas and his dark materials. Those are the series I like read on repeat and, and Junie B. Jones. Those are the things Junie I read. B. Jones. Junie B. Jones is great. <laughs> her name is Mud in this house. My mom calls her Junie Brat Jones. Well, yeah, she wasn't great, but. <laughs> um, and then once I was in middle school or high school, that's, you know, I, a lot of young adult was coming out then because I was born in 92, I guess for reference. So like the last Harry Potter book came out in like 2007, which was my like freshman year of high school. Twilight got real big while I was in high school. So I read it and I actually liked it till the fourth book. And I read the fourth book. And I'm like, what is this nonsense? <laughs> like you were great trash. You were predictable trash. You were exactly what I wanted. And in the fourth book, I'm just like, no. <laughs> Wasn't the second book that did it? The one where nothing happened? Nah, because I was a depressing, angsty girl. So I, I, I leaned into it. <laughs> I couldn't. I feel like I read it because I just had too much time on my hands when I was a kid. I, so like, I mean, I might as well. I do think it was also just such a big thing. And I was always team Jacob and Jacob's a bigger part of New Moon. So, yeah. I, also I don't know. Someone did like some weird, it was basically like the abridged series, but for books where they just like summarize their thoughts on the book, each chapter. I remember really liking that. Oh, that's cool. And like, basically after a while, they got bored of the book and they started writing like, fanfic basically of like because it was a dude reading and he's like okay so i'm gonna like go off and ride bikes with emma and blah 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 and like had very bad drawings that accompanied it and like that's all i remember about that yeah i think 2005 was when i discovered brandon sanderson and then that's all i read for like the next 10 years <laughs> so i didn't start picking up fantasy again and reading new fantasy and sci-fi till i went to grad school because college i didn't have time to discover new things. I think I read The Hunger Games and A Song of Ice and Fire because both of those got big while I was in college. I think I think I'd stopped reading just around the time a Hunger Hunger Games got big, so I hadn't bothered to read it. It was funny. I think my like sister mm, no, I think my mom actually read that. Yeah. Well I don't know how close we are in age. You could be younger than me, older than me. I have like no sense of anyone's age I on think the internet. Four years younger than you. Okay. Yeah, I have no sense of anyone's age in the universe. I just I, I like how Njiri always talks about her birthday, how she's like turning born an in a year. Yeah, she's born in a year, <laughs> turning an age. So I mean I know I can get I know the youngest age that she could be for a law degree. <laughs> so I can extra she's at least 26 or 25. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, should we some latitude? What'd you um, say? I said, got a lot of guessing latitude there. Anything yeah. older than 25. I mean, let's assume she's she's had a stabilized career for a while. So, I mean, I think I'll say she's at least my age of 28. And that way, I don't insult anyone. And I feel like I've extrapolated to a degree. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that was everything. Um, thanks for joining, everybody. Uh, have a good night. Um, and, you know, stay posted for what we'll be doing for that final um, live discussion of Bye.